Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer for Kentucky Derby Prep Recap. In this edition, we're going to take a peek back at the Grade 1 Florida Derby, going a mile and an eighth and featuring champion Forte going for his fifth consecutive victory. Before we break from the gate, keep an eye on the 4 Mage, keep an eye on the 11 Forte, keep an eye on the 10 Fort Bragg, as they leave the starting stalls, you're going to see Mage the four break slowly and lose all position. You're going to see Forte sort of be forced wide into the first turn by the eight and the nine. And that allows the slow starting Fort Bragg to split horses with a decisive move and get to the front. Yeah, it seemed like the plan um, from the rider of Fort Bragg, Rosario, was to just go to the front even after the poor start, Dan. And he actually didn't have that much trouble getting there. Um, and as far as Mage goes, it just kind of feels like once he broke, you know, maybe a half step slowly in there, Saez had a different plan. He didn't get aggressive with him, and he just sat towards the back of the pack. Forte, you knew, was going to be outside. It was just a question of how far, and I didn't think it was that bad on the first turn, Dan. Fort Bragg shook loose, but he had to work fairly hard through that opening quarter mile of 23 and 2. Meanwhile, Mage is trying to make up ground from the back of the pack. Forte has found a comfortable spot in mid-pack, Mike. Yeah, he gets a, a, an, another good trip in this race. And the pace is solid. Uh, Fort Bragg isn't blazing up there, but he's moving right along. He's also loose on the lead um, up the backstretch in this race. And Forte, I just, he found a good spot. He's in the clear. He's about mid-pack. He is starting to be ridden along right now. Madge is right behind him. I, you know, to be honest, Dan, I know he broke a little slowly. I thought Saez gave this horse a great ride. He certainly did. And look at the acceleration from Mage now. He's going to go right by Forte on the outside and put himself immediately in contention. But Louis, but uh, Arad Ortiz did not panic on Forte. And he's going to angle out into the clear. And it looks like he's got a lot of work to do. He eventually runs down Mage. I think he wins this race a little bit easier than a lot of people give him credit for. Yeah, I think that's maybe the key takeaway of the race, Dan. I mean, first of all, he still has about maybe two... Uh, two plus lengths at the eighth pole. I've seen plenty of horses be in that position at the in the stretch at Gulfstream and not get there. Um, Forte, he not only gets there, he gets there pretty easily at the end of this race. He runs right by Madge at the end. Um, it, it's sort of conflicting signals, maybe a little bit for Forte in this race. He still did what he had to do and he got the job done. And I thought he, he got it done relatively easily. So it's five graded stakes races in a row now for champion Forte, who's likely going to the Kentucky Derby as the deserving favorite. He received a 95 buyer speed figure for this race, which means he's going to go into the Derby as the most accomplished horse in the field, certainly, but perhaps not the fastest on the speed figure scale. Do you think some folks are going to jump off the ship, especially since he only won this race by a length? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know if jump off the ship's the right way to put it. I mean, I'm cer certainly, even though he did win another major race here, Dan, um, as I sort of mentioned before, the signals are still a little bit conflicting. He's now two for two so far this year. But if nothing else, you, you want to see them, um, even as they're winning, sort of maybe taking steps forward um, as they head into the Kentucky Derby. I'm not so sure that this was a step forward for Forte. He did what he had to do. He got the job done. I still liked this performance from him, but you've already pointed out he hasn't run a fast race yet this year, two preps. Um, he did not improve in this race, at least in my opinion, and he's still going to be a short price uh, come Kentucky Derby Day, whether that means he's the favorite or not. Let's talk about the runner-up because he doubtlessly has talent. We've seen that just in the simple way that he moves. He has a nice explosive push button acceleration. And this was only his third lifetime start. His maiden win was very good, but now he's broken slow in his last two races. And if they go on to the Kentucky Derby, not only will he be spotting experience to some talented horses, but in a 20 horse field, I just can't him see him breaking like that and winning. Well, yeah, because he, he won't. I mean, he can't break slowly again if they do go to the press on to the Derby with him. And I feel like I could argue both sides um, of that situation, too. Uh, he can't break slowly in the Derby and, and wind up really getting anything. Um, I'm with you. I think he's shown a good amount of talent so far in his three race career. I really liked his debut. I thought he had an excuse um, in his race prior to this one. And he did break slowly again here, Dan. I know that there's been at least some discussion about, you know, maybe he even ran the better race here. I am firmly in the camp of Forte on that one. I mean, again, I know this horse didn't break great. I thought Saez did everything right after that. And you can see it when you go back and watch that replay up the backstretch. He just followed Forte around the track in there. It's not like he had a ton of ground to make up. He followed him. He got first run on that horse. He had a clear lead at the eighth pole, and he got run down. 
Cyclone Mischief ran three good races out of four starts at Gulfstream Park this winter, including this race. He ran just fine. But when you watch the race, don't you just get the feeling that the, the top two are better than he is? He ran okay. He has fine tactical speed. Did you see any sort of excuse? Yeah, that, that's, I had the same takeaway you did. The top two are just better than he is. He ran well in here. Um, he was wide on the first turn as well. I would say even wider than maybe Forte was. Um, tracked four wide up the back stretch, was in contention around the second turn, and he did his very best, Dan. No match for Madge when they hooked it up, um, easily outfinished the final furlong of this race. He, he did well to be third, but he never looked like he was going to win to me. Fort Bragg, who was the third choice in the wagering, again, we saw him break a little bit slowly, but then he found that big seam in between horses to get to the front. He set a solid pace. He tired. Uh, I think maybe shorter is better for him. I still think he's a stake source. I don't think he's a classic type, but I think he might be a decent miler down the road. Yeah, I'm going to agree with all that stuff. I, I thought he did okay in here. The, the break felt like it was a little bit of a concern for him. Um, but again, he really didn't have that much trouble making the early lead. It kind of felt like nobody else really wanted it. So Rosario just went on. And the pace was solid, but I didn't think it was you know the kind of pace that was destructive for him. He still looked like he was going pretty well around the final turn when they challenged him. He didn't really put up much of a fight. I didn't like the way that he finished in the race. Maybe you're right. Maybe he needs to get, go a little bit shorter for now. 11th place finisher WNL was a graded stakes winner at two. He had a little bit of trouble in his seasonal debut, but he didn't run well that day. He had a lousy post position in this race. He didn't run well in this race. Uh, is it time for Danny Gargan to regroup? Yeah, well, maybe it is. I mean, listen, he was terrible in here. So I, I don't think any of the, you know, the trip considerations uh, make that much sense to talk about. Still, when you break from where he broke in here, um, you can't ride him the way that Jose Ortiz rode him. You either have to take back and try to make one run, or you have to just go and try to be forward. You can't let this horse come running out of there, sit, I don't know, five wide around the turn without going for any kind of position in the race and then get stuck out there all the way. I mean, he was terrible anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, he's in the position now, Dan, where he has to prove that he can you know, stand up at all on a fast track. Did you see anything from any of the other also rands that makes you think, well, okay, they're not triple crown contenders, but they're horses that can be useful in stakes later on? Um, no, I, I mean, I didn't really see any of that. I mean, the fourth place finisher, Mr. Ripple, I mean, I, I thought he ran fine. He got a really good trip in here and he wasn't close to good enough. Um, I don't know what kind of race there could be for him down the line, but it's not like this was a poor performance. I thought the only other horse that Maybe you wanted to see something from um, in here was another horse who was terrible in his most recent prep, the, the number one Jungfrau, and he was terrible again in here. Let's take a closer look at Forte. The two-year-old champion has won six of seven lifetime starts for Todd Pletcher. He's owned by Micropoli, St. Elias Stable. He's by violence out of the blame mare, Queen Caroline. He now has four consecutive route races as foundation. He'll come into the Kentucky Derby off of two successful preps at Gulfstream Park. You just can't knock this horse, Mike. It's just that he doesn't have an edge on speed figures coming into the Derby, or so it seems. Well, so far he doesn't, as a three-year-old anyway. I mean, the good news for Forte is um, he earned a, a triple-digit buyer when he won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile last year. So we know that he has a faster race in him. Um, his fountain of youth off the layoff was really good. Again, I thought I thought maybe, if nothing else, you wanted to see him take at least another small step forward here, and maybe he didn't do that. Um, still thought he ran pretty well, though. He's going to be a handful, I think, the first Saturday in May. Let's take a look at the prices. No surprise. Forte went off at 3 to 10. He returned 260 to win. 11, 4, and 9 in the Florida Derby on April Fool's Day. Forte, no fool. He's on a roll and he's rolling along to Louisville. 